الجمع بين القيام والقعود combining between standing and sitting the person now we remember we talked about a person has to stand under mandatory prayers we also said that on some condition that we mentioned he's also what allowed to sit down now we're going to say what about if the person wants to combine both of them he wants to stand and he wants to sit both of them Sheikh said ويجوز, it is permissible أن يصلي for him to pray صلاة الليل the night prayer قائما while standing أو قاعدا or even sitting down أو قاعدا or sitting down بدون عذر without any reasoning a person is allowed to pray قيام الليل at night standing up if he wishes or even sitting down if he wishes without any excuse without any excuse and the reason we know that right because Salatul Qiyah Salatul Layl is what? it's a nafila وَأَنْ يَجْمَعَ بَيْنَهُمَا and it's permissible for him to what? combine both of them he stands and he sits in the same prayer فَيُصَلِّيَ he prays وَيَقْرَأُ جَالِسًا he prays and he reads while sitting down وَقُبَيْلَ الرُّكُوعِ so he sits down he reads his long surahs he pray. Just before the ruku' is about to happen, what does he do? Yaqum, he stands up. فَيَقْرَأَ مَا بَقِيَ عَلَيْهِ مِنَ الْآيَاتِ قَائِمًا The little remaining verses that is left, he reads it and he does his ruku'. He does his what? That's also permissible for the person who's praying the talawih as well. So the talawih takes that ruling. Ah, that the person can do that. Coming to the talawih, if he's unable to pray the talawih, don't say, I'm tired today, I'm not in the mood, I can't pray. Actually, pray sitting is better. Then leaving it in total. Come and sit down. So the person, what does he do? He prays and he's a half of mashallah. So he knows the Imam is going to finish after an ayah or two. He stands up just before the ayah or two. And then when the Imam says Allahu Akbar, he does the Allahu Akbar with him. The ruku' You can do this. And all this, we're not mentioning the hadith. Remember, we're just reading the book. All of that is going, is going to come to us in the other book, Sifa Salat al Nabi. The Sheikh is all the narrations for all of them. Now we're not going to go too much into the narrations, just word for word. So the Sheikh is just using a hadith, he took it out and he made it in points. Okay, so all these have evidences, okay. فَيُصَلِّيَ He prays, وَيَقْرَأُ جَالِسًا And he recites while sitting down. وَقُبَيْلَ الرُّكُوعِ Just before the ruku' يَقُومُ He stands up. فَيَقْرَأْ مَا بَقِيَ عَلَيْهِ مِنَ الْآيَاتِ قَائِمًا He reads the little remaining verses for him standing up. ثم يركعوا ويسجود. Then he does his ruku' and his sujood. So he's praying, he's sitting down, he's reading, he's reading, he's reading, he's reading, he's reading, and he thinks he, he's going to go to ruku'. So an ayah or two before he does the ruku', he stands up. He stands up. And so what does he do? He goes for the ruku', and then he goes for the sujood. Okay? ثم يصنع مثل ذلك في الركعة الثانية. And he does that in the second ركعة again, the same thing. He prays. He recites while sitting down. He recites while sitting down. And just before the ruku' he stands up and he reads what is remaining for him in other verses. Another thing. وَإِذَا صَلَّى قَاعِدًا If he sits down, if he sits down, and what, how does he sit down? The question is. وَإِذَا صَلَّى If he prays, قَاعِدًا While sitting down. جَلَسَ مُتَرَبِّعًا He sits down, crossing his feet. Ah, he sits down, crossing his feet. And there are three ways of how to sit down. All of them have riwayat which are authentic. But the Sheikh specifically chose this one. And we are not going to go into the, um, the kalam that is revolving around it. وَأَيُّ جِلْسَةٍ أُخْرَى يَسْتَرِيحُ بِهَا The Sheikh said he sits down crossing his feet, which is called mutarabbi' Or he can sit down in any other sitting that he finds ease in. Doesn't matter. أو أي جلسة أو أي جلسة sorry أو any sitting يستريح he finds راحة joy he can sit he's allowed to بها in his salah it's permissible and there are three and that inshallah is going to come to us in the other book when we study بإذن الله الكريم الصلاة في النعال the الصلاة whilst wearing shoes الصلاة the الصلاة في النعال whilst wearing shoes so do it, pray in the salah on shoes. Yeah. It is permissible. Lahu for that individual. 
hafiyan. It is permissible for that person to stand up shoeless, barefooted. Kama as it's as it's permissible. Lahu for him an yusalliya to pray munta'ilan for him to pray with shoes. As much as it's permissible for him to pray with shoes, it's also permissible for him to pray. Sorry, as much as it's permissible for him to pray without shoes, it's permissible for him to pray with shoes. Same. Wayajuz is permissible. Lahu an yaqifa hafiyan. That he sits, that he prays, sorry. And he stands barefooted. Nothing on. Kama yajuz as it's permissible. Lahu for him an yusalliya munta'ilan. As he's permissible for him to pray wearing shoes. There's two conditions when a person wants to pray with the shoes. Two conditions. Remember these two conditions. That whatever he is wearing is pure. It's clean. That you're wearing shoes before you enter the salah with the shoes that you're wearing, you clean them. You rub them against something and you pray. That's one. And the second one is that it will not cause harm to anyone else. So is it right to take your shoes in a masjid which is a carpet? Because he goes against the second condition, no it's not. You take your shoes into a carpet, يتضرر, it will cause harm to the administration of the masjid. It will cause harm to the people who are praying in the masjid. It will cause harm to the masjid itself, it won't be clean. So to say I'm following that sunnah, we'll say follow the sunnah in the way the Prophet did it. How was his masjid like? It was sand. His masjid wasn't a carpet. والسلام, the Prophet's masjid was a sand. Ah. So when the Prophet, the sand, it turns over every day. And it moves around. And the dirt that goes on the sand, it dries out and goes. The carpet is not the same. So to come in shoes with the, to a masjid and say, I'm reviving the sunnah. And these people are going against the sunnah. Uh, they're ahlul bid'ah. And this is haqiqatan. It's a sign of your ignorance of the religion. Lidalika Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah talks about this matter in his Majmu' al-Fatawa. The issue of following the Prophet. What issue am I talking about? Following the Prophet in the Sunnah, the way he did it. Exactly the way he did it. In how he did it. In what form he did it. So when you say, I'm pr praying in the masjid with shoes, we'll say, good. The Prophet, did he pray Salah with shoes? The answer is yes. Did he pray it in a masjid which was a carpet? The answer is no. Are you following the Prophet? No, you're not following the Prophet. Ah, you are not. Follow him, alayhi salatu salam. So the person shouldn't wear a shoes if there's something dirty on it and pray with it. He should take it off. And the second, which is, nobody's going to be harmed with it. Because the Prophet said in the hadith, la darara wa la dirar. And we study that, that principle in our qawaid al fiqiyah. Wal afdal, which one is more, which one's better? Wal afdal, what is more preferred? And highly, high, uh, more virtuous. And you salli taratan hakada that sometimes he prays without shoes, wa taratan hakada, and that sometimes he prays with shoes. He revives the sunnah. That's the best one. If you always pray with your shoes, sometimes pray without shoes. And if you always pray without shoes, then sometimes pray with shoes. Balance it out. Revive the sunnah. That's the best thing. You see, we shaykhs. What is he trying to run away from? The call of some of the madahib who say this one's better and this one's better. The Sheikh said, Both of them are a sunnah. Both of them are what? Sunnah. So the best one is what? That you suddenly you pray like this sometimes, and then sometimes you say, you know what? I want to pray with my shoes. Hasbama huh. according to what? Taysirullahu, what is easy for you? In accordance to what is easy for you. Falaya takalaf salati wala that a person does not burden himself in having to take off his shoes, which he booted, he, mashallah, he tied them up. He has to sit down and reopen them all again. And why cause yourself that takalluf and that hardship? Huh? In order to take it off, pray with it. Take, why take it off? Allah has made this religion easy for you. Pray with your shoes. What about if the person doesn't have the shoes, but now to sit down and to put your shoes on and mashallah, do it and then pray? No, I mean a takalluf. Why burden yourself for that? Pray without it. So, hasbama according to taysir lahu. Whatever is easy for you. Whatever you find convenient for you. 
فَلَا يَتَكَلَّفْ The person should not burden himself in wearing it in the salah if he's unable to. وَلَا خَلْعُمَا And if he's taking them off, if he's already put them on, he has to sit down, he has to go through a lot in order to take it off. بَلْ Rather, إِنْ كَانَ حَافِيًا صَلَّ حَافِيًا Rather, if a person is shoe, he's in the masjid all day and he's, mashallah, and the masjid is a sand and he's, he has not got, he was wearing shoes, it's best that he pays with the shoes this time because you're not wearing anything. Because don't go out of your way to do extra. The religion loves what? Is. The second one is, you are wearing your shoes all day, it's best that you don't take them off. Ha. And some people, when it's they are disabled. They are disabled, such as my father. My father, his shoes are very big. He was big boots. So his shoes are half his shin, and that's where the shoelaces they reach. Shoelaces reach up to his shin. So it starts from the tip of his toe, toe where normal sho shoelaces start from, and it goes up to the top of his shin. Like his shoe, those big boots, wallet and boots he wears, because he's medical. So for him to sit down and to take them off every time is hard. And he has to go through all of them and put it in later. So the sunnah is what? For a person whose condition is like that, or who is, who is unable to do it, that he prays with it. Doesn't go out of his way to do it. But if the person is not wearing it, for him, my father, to put it on, it's also another job. So for him, he should just take it. And he should just pray without it. And not go out of his way in looking for it, to wear it if he's not wearing it, and to take it off if he's already wearing it. The masjid, the problem with it is that it's going to cause a lot of more harm for the people who are more in number than just an individual who's alone. So in that sense, do not take it, do, just take them off. But in kana hafiyan, salla hafiyan, if the person is shoeless and he is barefooted, he prays barefooted. Wa in kana munta'ilan, salla munta'ila. If he's with shoes, he prays with his shoes. Illa li amrin aaridin, unless there's an additional reason why he has to take his shoes off. And the Sheikh, wisdom Allah has given him, rahimahullah, he says, li amrin aaridin, a reason which is outside, which is that it may harm other people. Ah, it may harm other people. وَإِذَا نَزَعَهُمَا If the person takes it out, off. Now this is another problem. This is another mushkila that is very common amongst Muslims. وَإِذَا نَزَعَهُمَا If he takes off his shoes, فَلَا يَضَعْهُمَا عَنْ يَمِينِ Do not place those two shoes on your right. You took them off, don't put them on your right. Ah. وَإِنَّمَا عَنْ يَسَارِهِ But put them on your left. So if a person takes off his shoes in the masjid, he comes in. Remember those masjids before did not have what? Where we today, alhamdulillah, we just have to put our shoes in our shoe ranks. So there's alhamdulillah, shoe ranks deal with it. But before it never used to be like that. So what does the person do? He takes his shoes. Now alhamdulillah, it says, I said it's shoe ranks. So it may not apply. But if you're in a place where there isn't no shoe rank that you put your shoes on, the person should take those shoes and put it where? On his left. And not on his right. He should put it on his left, but not on his right. Either except. As long as there's not a person praying on your left, one should not do that. Because it becomes the right of that person. Once your left becomes the right of the person who's praying next to you, if you're shoulder to shoulder with the person on your left, he's, when you, which hand can you touch first? His left hand or his right hand? His right hand. A person who's praying on your left, the first thing that you can touch his hand is his right hand. So his right is what's on your side. So if you put the shoes on his left, what happens? I mean, on your left, it becomes his right and that becomes impermissible. One cannot do that. And the hadith is clear on that. وَإِلَّا وَضَعْهُمَا بَيْنَ رِجْلَيْهِ So what about if there is a person praying on your left and you can't put it on your left and of course you can't put it on your right as well because it becomes your right. Put it in between your feet. In between your feet. Listen to this very well inshallah. إِذَا لَمْ يَكُنْ عَيَسَارِ أَحَدٌ يُصَلِّي وَإِلَّا وَضَعْهُمَا بَيْنَ رِجْلَيْهِ And another common thing that has happened today which is the people, what do they do? They don't put it on their left, and some put it on their right, their rights. Or even the masjid's ranks are built on the right side of the masjid. 
and it falls under this prohibition. If the places where the, the shoe rack is, is on the right of the masjid, it falls under this prohibition. Ha, so when you enter the masjid, the people, they put it there, all on the side of the masjid. It's, it goes against, it's a prohibition. You see? All of it. If they take, they put it inside a bag or whatever. The right and the left is not a permissible place to put it. Now there's an issue. Some people have also done another extreme thing, which is that they put their shoes in front of themselves. Look at the bottom of the book. Sheikh says, Qul tu, I said, it's a footnote he put. And also there's a point that's alert that needs to be mentioned, which is that one should not place the what? The shoes in front of himself. This is a mana. That a lot of the majority of the prayers, the people who pray, have actually forsaken. And they come and they pray towards their shoes. Ha, he's praying towards his shoes. Naam. If the person puts it in between themselves, their feet, it doesn't become the, the, uh, the, the beginning of a person. It's when he puts it right in front of himself, on top of his head. But the person in front of him, if he puts it there, in between his feet, that's not an issue. And that's what the Sheikh is trying to point out there. That there's a difference between the two. And that this is bad manners. And this is something you see a lot of the people do. And according to this, the matter has become authentic from the Prophet. Sheikh Nasr is saying, As-salatu ala al-manbari, the salah on a pulpit. A salah on a pulpit, praying on a... Why, do, why did he say pulpit? Salah, what's the ruling on a salah to be prayed on a place which is a bit high, higher than the people who are praying with you? Ah, what is the ruling? Salat. Praying on salah on a place which is high. How? As-salatu ala al-manbari. The salah on a pulpit. Wa tajuzu salatu. It is permissible the salah. Al-imam for the imam. Ala makanin a place. Murtafi'in. A place which is high. It is permissible for the imam to pray on a place which is high. Murtafi'in. Kal-manbari. Like the pulpit. For what reason like it? When he's teaching the people. He's, and he stands for that. The condition is what? He's teaching the people. So the Shaykh is saying, it is permissible for a person who is an Imam to pray on a place which is high, huh? such as a pulpit. Why? To teach the people. To teach them on the pulpit. فَيُكَبِّرْ The person will say Allahu Akbar on the pulpit. وَيَقْرَعْ He will recite. وَيَرْكَعْ And he does his ruku' on the pulpit. وَهُوَ عَلَيْهَا And he's on top of the pulpit. ثُمَّ After that يَنْزِلُ قَحْقَرِيُّ He comes back, steps down. Three steps. He takes. Because the Prophet's pulpit was three. He comes back three steps. Then what does he do sujood on? حَتَّى يَتَمَكَّنَ مِنَ السُّجُودِ So he can do the sujood on the ground على الأرض في أصم المنبر Which is the beginning of the pulpit. He comes down. And then after that, as soon as he finishes his sujood, he stands up and he climbs the pulpit again. And he does it again. To teach the people, it is permissible for him. And he does in the other rak'at what he did in the first rak'at. So he says, Allahu Akbar. He recites on the pulpit. He does his ruku' while still on the pulpit. He's praying. And then he stands up, Sami Allahu liman hamidah. He goes backwards, without looking back, without turning his head, without turning around fully. He just comes back, step, back, and a step. Goes on the ground, he does his sujood, does his two sujood whilst on the ground. And then he stands up, he finishes two sujoods, he stands up again to his qiyam, and then he goes to the pulpit again, and he does what he just did. The Prophet did this, alayhi salatu salam. And that is to show you that the Messenger emphasized on the matter of the salah that much. That he showed them, alayhi salatu salam. He said it to them. He mentioned it to them. And he also showed it to them. And when he finished that salah on the pulpit, what did he say? Sallu, pray. Kama ra'aytumuni usalli. The way you see me pray on the pulpit. And that is what the Sheikh named his book. So the salah is a matter the Prophet took very serious. He stood on the pulpit and he prayed it like that, alayhi salatu. 
wasalam. Here's a matter that needs to be mentioned as, as well. The movement in the salah. If there is a necessity for it, it doesn't matter how much it is, it is permissible. There is not an, this speech that says that you can only move three times or you can only use five times or you can only move six times in the salah. There is no asal or no foundation for that. He's teaching the people how to pray the salah correctly. He's a, he's a, the people are new Muslims, they just entered Islam for instance, and this is their first salah that he's, they're praying behind him. And, or the person is an imam and he saw the people of the, in the village that he came to, they do not know how to pray or their salah is very weak. Or when he looked at the praying method, he finds it that the people are very off how they should be praying. So he takes the, the role of saying, I'm, I'm going to teach you guys how to pray. So they can see him, he's higher than them. What is the ruling if he's not teaching them? It is not permissible to be higher than the people. So that's what's in the hadith. That's what's in there. He's only allowed to go high, on somewhere high that the people can see if he's what? Listen to the story. Just listen to the story. Abu Musa al Abu Mus'ud al Badriyu, the companion who participated in the Battle of Badr, he saw Hudayfa ibn Yaman leading the Salah. And Hudayfa was a bit higher than the rest of the people. What did he do? فَأَخَذَ الرِّدَاءَهُ The Sahabas were very, mashallah, according to the Sunnah, he grabbed him from the collar and he pulled him off the way he was, place he was on. Hudayfa, he dragged him off. فَجَبَذَهُ He grabbed him, Hudayfa, and he brought him to the ground. Hudayfa prayed the salah, finished. Abu, Musa, Abu Mas'ud al-Badri said to him, did it not reach you that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa prohibited for an imam to be higher than the people? And then Hudayfa, did he, he said, did you not see me follow you when you pulled me? Did you not see me go with you? I remember what you pulled me for. You, did you not see me go with you when you pulled me? So the message got to me before, before the salah finished. So the imam is not allowed to be higher than the rest of the people, except unless he's teaching them the salah. There's a lot of mashakil in them. So there's, a bit, there's a little mahra built for the imam. The, the place, mashallah, is mihrab. Huh? And then this mihrab, which is beautifully built and costs so much money. In the lights and glow, glowy, and then inside this little house, it's a house. There's a, a big, mashallah, floor very high off the ground, and then he takes steps before he goes onto that place, and that's how he prays. And he's very higher than the rest of the people. This is innovation that shaitan is playing with the people's minds in this matter. And also, the other ruling that is taken from this point, which is you're allowed to move in the salah, but it has to be for the sake of the religion, for, for the sake of the salah. If it's, if it's an important thing that you're doing, that it's for the salah, it's permissible to move. حَتَّى يَتَمَكَّنَ مِنَ السُّجُودِ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ فِي أَصْلِ الْمَنْبَرِ ثُمَّ يَعُودُ إِلَيْهِ فَيَسْمَعُ فِي الْرَكْعَةِ الْأُولَى كَمَا يَسْمَعُ فِي الْأُولَى So he comes back, steps backwards, until he comes back to the asal of the ground. Because remember the sujood has to be done on the ground, so he does it on the floor. And then after that he goes back on the pulpit to teach them the salah. And when he finishes that rak'ah, uh, he does it what he done again, to the end of the salah. That's permissible. Wujubu salati ila suturati wa dunu wiminha. The ruling and sorry, the obligation of praying towards a sutra, an object, wa dunu wiminha, and getting close to the object. Praying towards an object and getting close to it. That's the ruling. And you see, subhanAllah, many people pray without a sutra. Listen to the ruling of the matter of the sutra. وَيَجِبُ is mandatory أَنْ يُصَلِّيَ إِلَى السُّتْرَةِ It is mandatory for the person to pray towards an object, a sutra. فَلَا فَرْقَ It is no difference في ذلك in that matter of the sutra بين المسجد in the masjid وغيري and other than it. It's, there's no difference. Whether in the masjid or outside the masjid. It doesn't matter where it is. Ah, it's my house, inshallah, it's not a problem. Ah, ah it's the desert, it's not a problem. There's, who's going to be here right now in the desert? You say to yourself, we're going to see it now. وَلَا بَيْنَ كَبِيرِهِ وَصَغِيرِ And it doesn't matter between it's big and it's little. doesn't matter. لِعُمُومِ قَوْلِهِ لِعُمُومِ قَوْلِهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم Because of the general ruling that came to us regarding the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet didn't break it down and say, in the masjid this is it, outside the masjid is this. The big one of it is this and the small one of it is this. The Prophet didn't dif dis dis distinguish between it. He gave a general ruling. So it falls under the general ruling. If you want to take it out of that general ruling, give us your delete. Ha, ah, say the masjid is different from the outside. Hey, where's your delete for that? Because I have a general ruling that allows me, that, sorry, that makes it oblig obligatory on me for everywhere. 
you now want to take that obligation out. Bring me your delil. Bring your delil. The Sheikh, the Prophet was the Sheikh is now to, trying to bring you the general statement of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. La tu salli, do not pray. Ila, la tu salli, do not pray. Illa ila sutrati. The Prophet said, do not pray except with a sutra. Allahu Akbar. Meaning, don't pray a salah except with a sutra. Wa la tada ahadan yamurru bayna yadayk. Do not let any individual go in front of you. Fa in aba, if he refuses, فَلْتُقَاتِلُ Fight with that individual. فَإِنَّ مَعْهُ الْقَرِينَ Shaytan is with him. الْقَرِينَ يَعْنِ الشَّيْطَانِ If a person tries to go with you, you're praying, you stopped him, you pushed him away, you put your hand out. You see? You push him, he comes again, you push him. He comes again, this part, part the Prophet ﷺ said, fight with him. Meaning, whatever force you may need to use to throw him away, so before you just slightly, slightly tap, tap in it. But this time, if he comes, you throw him. Even if he drops and he skids, and even if he dies, there's nothing on you. 